Welcome to our first lecture of Physics 106. My name is Will Gannett, uh, and I will be the instructor for this course. I want to start by telling you what I think is cool about Physics 106 and the stuff the stuff we learn here. So physics, as a you know, as an area of study, is a study of the motion and interactions of matter. That is, you know, all the stuff, all the stuff in the universe, and trying to figure out the fundamental rules that govern the motion and interactions of this stuff. Um, so the things that we learn in Physics 106, what's, what I think is really cool, is the equations and concepts we're using are going to apply equally well to uh, a bicycle as they do to planets orbiting the sun or to atoms making up a molecule or things like that. Of course, on those other scales, there are some other things we have to worry about that are different, but um, but lots of the ideas and concepts we can apply exactly the same, and the equations uh, for lots of this, for lots of these are are also the same. Uh, so I think it's really cool that that works at these different scales, and 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 yeah, I think it's really fun. So hopefully you guys enjoy this semester. Um, all right, so the first topic we're talking about in Physics 106 is kinematics. So uh, kinematics coming from the same Greek root here, kine, like meaning motion, uh, as words like kinetic or kinesiology, things like that. So kinematics is just uh, how to describe the motion of objects. So uh, if I have an object that moves from point A to point B, what are the important things that I should be measuring? What can that tell me about where it's going to be later, etc. Uh, so this the topic of kinematics is actually going to last for a few chapters. Uh, chapter one of our book talks about kinematics in one dimension, so motion just along a line. And then chapter two talks about uh, kinematics in two dimensions, where we can have objects, well, they could be doing something boring like going diagonally in a straight line, but they could also do things like follow curved paths, and we'll have lots more to say about that in chapter two. So let's stick with chapter one for now. Uh, so if we want to describe and measure the motion of an object, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we have to do is be able to be able to uh, talk about where it is at any particular moment of time, that is, its position. So our first uh, topic in kinematics is going to be the position of an object. So for position, uh, we are going to use the variable x to describe its position along the x-axis. And so our, our x-axis in this class on, you know, on the, the whiteboard is generally going to be drawn uh, to the right. And I try to draw a little plus x over there to remind us uh, that to the right is positive. That's by convention. There's nothing inherently plusy about going that way. It's just if we all agree going that way is to the right, it makes grading homework and stuff a lot easier. So to the right is, is positive. To the right is positive. Um, okay, so later on we will have other axes, but for now we're just going to be worrying about this, this x-axis. Uh, our units of position are meters. Of course, there are lots of other units of position that we could use, but in this class we're going to stick with SI units uh, and our SI units of position are meters, so a meter is, you know, about uh, three feet, a little more than three feet long. Okay, so our position is always measured relative to some origin. And the location of that origin is kind of arbitrary. We want to keep it consistent within a particular problem, but from problem to problem we might be calling different places in space the origin, and, and that's fine. So, you know, maybe at somewhere like here, I'm just you know, doing an example, uh, maybe at this point this is our origin, so we label this point x equals zero. Uh, we don't have to necessarily label it, but, you know, it doesn't hurt. Um, we already talked about that, that's good. Uh, just like how our position can be represented by positive numbers, our position can also be represented by negative numbers. And all that means, if we're going in the minus x direction, or excuse me, if we are at a minus x position, uh, is that we are to the left of the origin. So over here, we're going to have values of x that are greater than 0. Over here, we're going to have values of x that are less than 0. 
and yeah, plus or minus is just whether it is to the right or to the left of this arbitrary location. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, we could do a, an example that's really boring, but what the heck, if we have like x equals one, two, three, four, and I have a ball that is right here, uh, you know, what is its position? I said this was one, two, three, four. Uh, so its position is x equals three meters, right? And that's not exciting, but now you have an example. All right. Our next topic in kinematics is displacement. And displacement is just a word that means a change in the position. So anytime we say displacement, we, we could also say change of position. Uh, and to talk about our variable for displacement, I want to talk about change of position. So uh, in lots of sciences, when we have a change in some variable, we represent that with a capital delta in front of that variable. So the change in the position, well, the position is x, so the change in the position we represent like this delta x, and that is, you know, this is a single variable uh, delta x that we are going to use as our, as our you know, to represent the displacement. Just like any change being measured, uh, delta x is going to be the final value of that variable minus the initial value of that variable. So this is x final minus x initial. So we have an object that started at position i initial, and we plug that value in there, and later on at some other point it's at position x final, we plug that number in there, and the difference between those is our displacement. There you go. Um, so if our displacement is positive, greater than zero, that means x final is bigger than x initial, or really it's, it's x final is more positive than x initial, and so our object ended up to the right of where it started. Similarly, if x initial is bigger than x final, so we started over here and ended over here, then we moved to the left, right? We would get a negative number here, and we, we ended up to the left of our initial position. Uh, lastly, and this definitely can happen a lot and will happen a lot, we can also have an object end up exactly where it started, and in that case, uh, our final and initial positions are the same, and our displacement equals zero. Now, this doesn't have to mean that an object sat still, right? So, for example, I could start at this position, whatever it is, and, and okay, so my position is right here in the middle of the whiteboard, and I go off and do some motion, I go over here, I go over here, and when my position is measured again, I'm back at this position in the middle of the whiteboard, so x initial and x final were the same. That doesn't mean I didn't move, that just means that the net result of all of that motion is that I ended up back where I started, and so these two are the same, and so the displacement equals zero. Um, yeah, so just because this equals zero doesn't mean you didn't move, it just means you ended up not, not having moved from where you started. That's not the right way of saying that. It's good that I can still make these little screw-ups on the video, uh, just like I would in the real classroom so you guys can, can appreciate uh, the, the live nature of this recording. Okay. The last uh, concept related to position I wanted to talk about is uh, distance traveled. I don't know if that's spelled right. That looks better. Distance traveled. Um, so if we have an object that starts at some position and undergoes some motion and ended up back where it started, like we said, the displacement was zero but it still traveled some distance, right? My example of this is, let's say you have a car, right? You start at your house, you drive north for five miles, and you drive south for five miles, and you 
you know, park at your house again, uh, your displacement is zero, but the odometer on your car, the thing that counts the number of miles you've gone, uh, that did not, <laughs> you know, that did not go up when you went north and then go down when you went south, right? It, uh, it goes up in both directions. So the distance traveled is, is just that. It is like the, um, if you have motion that's made up of a bunch of little displacements, it's like the sum of the absolute values of the displacements that make up the motion. Um, there isn't like a better equation for this. Really, the, you know, if you're asked for the distance traveled, this is kind of a think about it and write down the answer sort of thing more than it is a plug numbers into the equation sort of thing. But hopefully you understand how this is different than the displacement. All right. I think that's everything to talk about for position. Uh, in the next video, we will talk about, um, about how long these things take to happen.